Good morning. We are Margaret and Alan Hensley from the Colony, Texas, and welcome to First Congregational Church of Crystal Lake. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Good morning, beloved. It is so good to be with you on the Sunday of Joy, the third Sunday of Advent. One of the things that gives me great joy is the incredible generosity that each and every one of you has shared through our incredible Giving Tree program, where we give gifts to those who need some extra help around this holiday season to bring some joy into their lives as well. For all of you who bought gifts for that Giving Tree program, we need to receive those gifts today, Sunday, December 13th, in order so that we can distribute those to the agencies who can get them to the individuals in time to receive them. If you have not yet turned in your gift, please contact our Giving Tree Coordinator, Susan Aducci. Her information is right there on the screen to arrange how she might be able to receive that gift from you. Thank you, beloved, so much for your incredible, generous support of this important ministry. Coming up in just a couple of weeks uh, is going to be Christmas Eve. It'll be here, beloved, before we know it. And this year, like all other years, we will still have our three services. But all three of those, unlike previous years, will all be virtual. At 4.30, we will be having our family interactive Christmas service, including a, a children's pageant. We hope that uh, you and your families will be able to join us for that. Again, that's at 4.30 on December 24th. And then that evening at 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock, will be our Christmas Eve service. We invite you to bring those candles that hopefully you received in your Advent boxes. If you didn't get an Advent box, just bring a candle with you so that you can light it with us together. It'll feature a lot of music from Jubilate and Alleluia Sound Youth Choir and the Vestry Choir. We will hear the promises of God and more than that, beloved, we will hear the good news that a light shines in the darkness and the darkness of financial worry, the darkness of pandemic, the darkness of being socially distant did not overcome it. And we need to hear that good news this year, perhaps more than any other year. So we hope that you'll join us for those services. Again, that's the family service at 4.30 and then our candlelight Christmas Eve services at 8 and 11. You can find that on our website. You can find it on our Facebook page or also on YouTube. Beloved, as I just mentioned, we are going to be celebrating Christmas Eve virtually this year with candlelit services at 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock. But I need your help. Some of you have already begun to send in those candle pictures. Now, what I'm asking you to do is to take a candle. You can use the small ones that we typically use on Christmas Eve that were included within your Advent box or just a candle from home. But I invite you to take a picture of yourself in a dark room or at nighttime where perhaps the only light is the light from that candle illuminating your face or the faces of your family or loved ones to take that picture and send it to me. You can email it to me directly, eric at fcc-cl.org. You can also go to our Advent website that has all the stuff that we've been doing during Advent at fcc-cl.org slash Advent and just click on the submit your candle uh, picture there. There's also instructions right there. Beloved, we would love to see your face and have you participate in one of our most special services throughout the year, this year's Christmas Eve candlelit service. Thank you for your help.
Hello, beloved, and being the third Sunday of Advent, this is our third week of our miracle offering, and holy cow, we are so grateful for so many of you that have already given to this important offering. Remember that miracle offering is a special opportunity, an invitation that we have uh, to give to those agencies and organizations in our community that are making a miraculous difference, helping feed the hungry, helping welcome the stranger, and care for the most vulnerable in our midst, just as Jesus did. And this is the season to remember and celebrate that ministry of Jesus as we anticipate remembering and celebrating once again his glorious birth. Beloved, right now we are almost halfway to our goal. We're hoping to raise $20,000 this year. We're just about at $10,000. And again, we're going to continue to collect through the miracle offering all the way through Epiphany, which is January 6th. Now, beloved, if you would like to make a gift to the miracle offering, please go to fcc-cl.org slash miracle. You can also send in a donation to the First Congregational Church of Crystal Lake at 461 Pearson Street, Crystal Lake, Illinois, 60014. One of the agencies that we're supporting this year is Habitat for Humanity, which are building homes uh, right just about next door to us, right over on McHenry Avenue. And we are sponsoring one of those homes. And so we want to tell you a little bit more about uh, some of the folks who uh, are going to be living in those homes, our new neighbors there on McHenry Avenue. Hear this from Habitat for Humanity. Where others see obstacles, Jessica Mejia sees opportunities, and this goal-oriented young woman won't let any problem stop her from securing a home for her seven-year-old daughter. Jessica, a 30-year-old single parent, has been on her own since she was a teenager. After working in various jobs, restaurants, hospitality, and cosmetology, she's employed as a personal loan specialist and is following a path to management. On the side, she works as an Uber driver and a hairstylist. Jessica and her daughter are excited to move into a new home in Crystal Lake built by Habitat for Humanity of Northern Fox Valley with the help of Thrivent Financial and the First Congregational Church of Crystal Lake. My daughter has never had a room of her own, so this is our dream, Jessica said. This home will give us stability and a sense of accomplishment. Jessica, who was raised in Carpentersville, has previous volunteer experience with Habitat for Humanity and PADS. By working at the Habitat Restore in Elgin and at a couple of build sites, Jessica has added to her ever-growing skill set. She says, You learn a lot of what goes into a house, and you meet a lot of nice people who help others. And I've learned a lot about painting, cutting tiles, and many other things. We have lit the candle for hope because the world is broken and the wait is long, but hope just won't let go. We have lit the candle for peace because the world is broken and the wait is long, but we refuse to be frozen by fear. We now light one candle for joy. Because the world is broken and the wait is long, but our joy cannot be contained. Like a toddler toppling the thrones of power with a gleeful swipe, joy pierces our silence with song, interrupts our sighing with laughter, unshackles our fumbling feet to dance. My soul magnifies the Lord, she whispers, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So we light one candle because it only takes one. Christ is with us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Friends, as we come to our time of offering, this is a time of thanksgiving. This is a time of celebration. We give back because we recognize so much of what we have received from God, that hope, that peace, that love, and today more than anything, that joy that we receive from God. And there are few things in this world that bring me as much joy as all of you. And the many, many ways that each and every one of you proclaims the good news, the love and grace of God in small and great ways each and every day. Beloved, if you would like to support God's ministry here at the First Congregational Church of Crystal Lake, you can do so by going to fcc-cl.org slash donate. You can also give directly from your mobile device by texting FCCCLDONATE to 77977, or you can mail in a donation to the First Congregational Church of Crystal Lake at 461 Pearson Street, Crystal Lake, Illinois, 60014. Beloved, we are grateful for all that God has given us. And so let us continue our worship as we give back to God. Friends, in a moment, Pastor Emily is going to gather us together in prayer. But before she does, there are several joys and concerns from the congregation that I wish to share with you at this time. I continue to ask for prayers for Morgan Burkle. Her grandfather, Robert Smith, continues to end his earthly life here. And so we hold her and her family in prayer during this time of her grandfather's uh, transition uh, from this life into the next. We lift up and joy Paul Voigt, who had a successful cataract surgery this last week and continue to ask for prayers as he continues to recover from that surgery. I also ask for those prayers to surround Joe Voigt's sister Ellie as she continues to adapt to uh, transitioning to an assisted living facility. We ask for your prayers of love and grace to surround Cynthia Hodgson's brother Joe and also to be with Lois Booker's niece, Katie, and with her cousin who continues to recuperate from COVID. Beloved, we ask that you would hold the Riegler family in your prayers, especially Sue Riegler. Sue's brother, Walt, died on December 4th suddenly and very unexpectedly. Walt was confirmed and married here at the First Congregational Church of Crystal Lake, and so we hold Sue and Gary and their family so close in prayer as they mourn this devastating and unexpected loss. I ask for your prayers of support to be with Wendy Moyland, who has returned to work after uh, taking a leave of absence. We lift up in prayer Marlene Peterson, who is Jenny Streit's mother, who is resuming treatment for cancer. And ask also that you keep Ellen Hansen in your prayers as she begins chemo treatment for ovarian cancer. We ask for your prayers to be with Paul King, who is in the hospital this last week, but has been released uh, and is awaiting some results from testing. And ask that uh, you we join me in praying for good news from those tests. Also ask for prayers for Wedge Thomas, who was also in the hospital this last week, but thankfully is all back home as well. I ask for your prayers for of healing and wholeness to be with our uh, church council chairperson, Jim Trotter, who's going in this week for knee replacement surgery, that it would not only be a successful surgery, but also for healing and strength as he recovers from that surgery on the other end. And beloved, there are so many in our congregation, but also many more in our hearts that are recovering or suffering from COVID-19 and the coronavirus. So I ask that you would keep all of those in your prayers, those who have lost loved ones, those who are continuing to recover from this terrible pandemic and disease. Beloved, let us open our hearts before God. 
remembering that there is no concern too great that the arms of the cross cannot help us bear it, and there is no joy that is too small that the angels of heaven don't join with us in singing and giving thanks to God. Beloved, let us gather together in prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise on this day for all that you have done for your people. We thank you that you have revealed yourself and your son, that you have made a way that we can come into new life and that we can constantly be reshaped into your image and likeness. We thank you for all the blessings of life, for family and health and peace, for provision and shelter and friendship, and as we continue on in this season of Advent, we thank you also for what you have planned that we cannot know. It's an incredible thing to say right now, God, but we thank you for the unexpected. We thank you for all you have planned that is beyond what we can comprehend. And so though we are tired, Give us a spirit of holy expectation and a capability to live with wide-eyed wonder, waiting for the surprises that you have in store for us. In the midst of this age of social upheaval, we have come to make so much of the rest of our lives as routine as possible. No surprises of those we have had more than enough. But in the midst of that, Ensure that we never come to expect that what you do, what you will do, is what you have always done. That what you will give is what you have always given. That who you will be to us is what you always have been. Or that we will always be to you who we have always been. That we will always accomplish for your kingdom the kinds of things that we have always already done. God, you shocked the world and turned it upside down when you took flesh in Jesus and made a new covenant. When you visited the world as one of us, when you became part of the creation that you created yourself. So shock us again this Advent. Visit us in surprising and unexpected ways. Give us a yearning for your visitation and a hunger to see what you will do in us. Let your work of salvation in us be fresh. Renew your calling upon our lives, and use us in ways that we never imagined. Give new life to our relationships. Visit us again and again, and do what only you can think of. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel. Amen.
reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 56. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Friends, will you pray with me? God, in the midst of difficult times, we know that we are still surrounded by a myriad of blessings, of joys. But too often, we look for your presence. We look for those aspects of good news and joy and far off places. So open our ears and our eyes and our hearts and our hands to see your good news unfolding around us, bringing us joy each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, as a child, one of my favorite songs that I learned in Sunday school was I've got the joy. Perhaps you know it. It was always sang in in two groups. The first group, which to be honest was the group I always wanted to be a part of, would sing, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And the second group would ask, where? And then the first group would respond, down in my heart. And the second group, where? Down in my heart. And then we would do it again. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? And then everyone would say, down in my heart to stay. Now, as I mentioned, I always liked being part of that first group. I love the idea of proclaiming that I've got the joy down in my heart, something that goes beyond mere happiness to a wholesome joy, that kind of that that belly-filling excitement. But I have to be honest, as we gather here today, On the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, which which means Rejoice Sunday, it's the Sunday dedicated to joy. Well, I don't feel part of that first group. In fact, more often than not, I, I find myself feeling part of the second group. The where group? Where is this joy that that you're singing so much about? Where is this joy that that moves you to burst into song? So right now, I look in the news and I see that there are over 12 and a half million people who are unemployed in the United States. I continue to follow the deep divisions in our national government, which means that many of those unemployed people are at risk of being evicted at the end of this month, are losing the support that they desperately need in order to put food on the table and to cover those basic needs of rent and mortgages and medical bills. Thousands more worry about being furloughed or losing their jobs. Just this last Wednesday, in one day, more people died of COVID-19 than died in the terrorist attacks of 9-11. The days are getting darker and colder, and so many of us are deeply missing the dinners, the gatherings, the carol singing, the joke telling, the companionship and joy of being with friends and extended family this holiday season. Where is the joy? Today's scripture reading is a song of joy. Mary's incredible Magnificat. Now, if you missed it last week, you you may wonder, what happened? What happened that moved Mary to suddenly launch into this extraordinary, amazing, faithful song? You may think that it was the Annunciation, that it was when Gabriel comes down on gilded wings and tells Mary that she will give birth to the Son of God. That this world-changing, supernatural, divine event is what moves Mary to sing. 
but it isn't. See, the best response that Gabriel gets from Mary is subdued at best. There's confusion and pondering, and finally an agreement saying, let it be with me according to God's will. A statement of incredible trust and faith to be sure, but of exuberant joy? Not quite. See, today's scripture does not come on the heels of an extraordinary event, but rather on one that is very normal. Discovering herself to be pregnant, Mary seeks out an older relative, a person who can support her during this time, who also happens to be pregnant. Her relative Elizabeth, upon seeing Mary and being greeted by her, is overjoyed and greets her, not with doubt or skepticism or judge or shame, but instead greets her with acceptance and welcome and love and genuine joy. It is this greeting, it is this love, this acceptance, this embrace and the authentic hospitality and welcome of Elizabeth that moves Mary to then burst into song. No longer a simple acceptance of her fate, but a joyful proclamation. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. And from now on, all the nations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things in me. She has heard the good news from angels. But it isn't until she is welcomed and loved and embraced that she begins to truly believe it. That her precarious situation has turned from puzzlement and perhaps fear into joyous proclamation. And so it is no surprise that she sings of those who are also in precarious situations. The poor, the hungry, the lonely, the oppressed, and the abandoned. And in her song, she remembers how God not only delivers them, but like Mary, is able to accomplish great and incredible, amazing things through those who are too often overlooked or cast out. By the world. Joy. Joy can be so difficult because too often we are looking in the wrong places. We look for joy in the places and people that we consider to be newsworthy or worthy of our attention. We look for joy in Springfield, Illinois, and Washington, D.C. We look for joy in the popular and the powerful, in athletes and celebrities and politicians and pundits, and quickly become discouraged when too often what we find is division and greed and opportunism and cessationalism. We watch the news. We doom scroll through Facebook and social media and join that second chorus asking the Marys of this world, where, where is this joy that you sing of? How can your soul magnify God and how can you see, sing praises when the world around you seems to be falling apart? I'm reminded of that old proverb, that old saying, those words of wisdom, that in times of distress and despair, we may, like the psalmist, lift our eyes, looking to the horizon, looking to the hills for God, perhaps seeing nothing. We may cry out in anger and outrage, but seem to only hear silence. But that is because God is not far off on a distant hill or horizon, but instead God is as close to us as our own breath. And beloved, we do not need to shout for God to hear us because God can hear the quietest whisper of our soul or the whimpers of our broken hearts. I ask, where is the joy? because I'm looking in the wrong places. 
I'm looking in the palaces of Rome and the temples of Jerusalem. I'm looking to Caesars and governors and the kings of this world when the joy that I seek is so much closer. It's the embrace of an old friend, the acceptance of a respected mentor, the promised laughter of children, the world-changing love that we share with one another. Where is the joy? I may not hear it in the headlines or in the 24-hour news cycles, but if I take a moment and look closer, I begin to see it unfold all around me. I see joy in the faces of church members and friends who have moved far away and whom I miss, as I know that you do, but are now able to join us in this virtual medium for worship. I read joy in the Christmas cards that I receive from old friends and acquaintances. I see joy in the thousands of twinkling Christmas lights and decorations, which seem to be brighter and more prevalent this year than ever before. I hear joy in the laughter of the children playing amidst the beautiful twinkling lights of the Woodstock Square. I experience the joy, the joy of so many of you holding one another in love and in prayer. Every week, beloved, we receive dozens of phone calls from you and others asking how people within the community are doing and what you can do to help. And that love and concern brings me joy. The ways in which you help build houses for Habitat for Humanity humanity and volunteer at the food pantry and support the giving tree and the miracle offering or simply reach out and calling one another to just see how one another is doing during this time. Friends, that is where we see joy. To paraphrase Hugh Grant from that Christmas movie, Love Actually, joy actually is all around us. And it may not come on the gilded wings of angels. In fact, often joy can be found in the most ordinary of places, the most ordinary of people, and joy can come from the smallest of things. Beloved, I want to hear your stories of joy. I know that they're there. Each week when we pray, we often say that there is no concern that we have, no concern so great that the arms of the cross cannot help us bear it. But we also say that there is no joy that is so small that all the heavens don't sing with us and celebrate those joys with us. So I want to invite you to share with me your joys from the smallest to the greatest. Share with me those pieces of good news. If you have the joy, 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 joy down in your heart, then beloved, I want to hear it. Because what we need in this world right now is joy. A joy that can give us a hope for tomorrow. A joy that can grant us the peace of mind that the darkness isn't that dark after all. And a joy which moves us to love ourselves, to love one another, and to love God. Beloved, I find joy in each and every one of you. In the light and grace and love that you bring to the world each and every day in the smallest and the greatest of ways. That is a joy that lights up the darkness and it lightens my heart. It is a joy that I keep down in my heart where it will stay. Amen.
Beloved, a moment ago, I said I wanted to hear your stories of joy, and I really, really do. Please share with me, and they can be small things, they can be huge things. Share with me your stories of joy. You can email them to me, you can record yourself in a small video and send it to me. You can send me a picture with a short story about why that picture brings you joy. But if you go to our website, fcc-cl.org slash advent, there's a whole piece there, the a button that says share the joy that will talk all about how you can share those stories of joy. More than anything, I would love to hear it in your own voice and own words, but I would love to hear what brings you joy this season. And so, beloved, go forth into this world and may your hearts be filled with joy. May you not just hear the good news, but may you believe it. And may you share it with all whom you meet. May you go forth bringing hope and peace and joy into this world, being the light of Christ this day and every day. Amen. I got news, I got news, I got news, oh Lord, I got good news. I got a crown up in the that kingdom, ain't that good news? I got a crown up in the that kingdom, ain't that good news? I'm gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up by my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, ain't that good news? I got news, oh Lord, I got good news. I got a roll up in the back kingdom, ain't that good news? I got a roll up in the back kingdom, ain't that good news? I'm gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up on my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, ain't that good news? I got news, I got news. I got a heart up in that kingdom, ain't that good news? I got a heart up in that kingdom, ain't that good news? I'm gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up on my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, ain't that good news? I got news, oh Lord, I got good news. I got a soul up in that kingdom, ain't that good news? I got a soul in the of that kingdom, in that good news. I'm gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up on my cross, gonna sing my song before my Jesus. I'm gonna play my heart before my Jesus. I'm gonna put on my robe before my Jesus. I'm gonna wear my crown before my Jesus. Ain't that good news?